Gluteal tendinopathy is a real pain in the butt. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Anyways, in this episode, we're going to talk about gluteal tendinopathy. Gluteal tendinopathy is a common cause of pain on the outside of the hip. Hip bursitis or greater trochanteric bursitis are two other conditions that present very similarly to gluteal tendinopathy. And if we look at the anatomy, the tendon and the bursa are actually pretty close in proximity. So it's actually been called into question whether these are actually different diagnosis or maybe they're just on the same spectrum. And so we can say like a gluteal tendinopathy is a less severe form. And then when we have more severe pain, it would be more of a greater trochanteric bursitis. And that means that we can approach them fairly similarly if the mechanism isn't too much different. If you've seen some of the other videos, you'll know that I talk about tendinopathy quite a bit and I'll actually link uh, my video to that so you can get a better glimpse of kind of what tendinopathy is. But in short, it's an overload condition. So when we're looking at how a gluteal tendinopathy develops, we're probably doing some stuff that's overloading the glutes. So we could be running a lot, squatting, deadlifting, all those kind of things. Or maybe we just walk for a while and that caused an overload of the tendon and led to pain on the outside of the hip. Looking at treatment, there's generally a couple routes that we can go. So sometimes when we think of like a tendonitis or a bursitis, we'll think inflammation. And so we'll either do an NSAID, so like Tylenol, ibuprofen, that kind of stuff to try to control the swelling. Or if the pain's severe enough, we'll do a corticosteroid injection to really kind of help decrease some of the inflammation and the pain on that hip. The other route is an exercise route. And so what this would generally entail is decreasing the load that we're placing on the tendon because it's an overload condition and then gradually building back up through strengthening exercises. And recently there was a study published in the British Medical Journal that actually looked at the treatment options for gluteal tendinopathy. So there was three different groups. There was an education plus exercise group. There was a corticosteroid injection group. And then there was a wait and see approach, which is kind of like a control. And what they found was that the education plus exercise group was actually superior to all the other groups at both uh, short term, so at eight weeks, and then also longer term at 52 weeks. The exception was that the education plus exercise group was about the same uh, pain intensity as the corticosteroid injection group at 52 weeks, so a year after therapy had ended. And, but both of those were better than the wait and see group. So besides the fact that exercise plus education was superior to corticosteroid injections in this study, another interesting part was that at eight weeks, they actually didn't find a difference in muscle strength, so glute muscle strength at eight weeks, despite improvements in the education plus exercise group. And this highlights a couple different things. So one is that the education component is probably pretty important in the recovery from gluteal tendinopathy. The education component basically meant that we would monitor the load that we're putting on it, so we'd gradually increase the load that we we're placing on the tendon. Obviously, if it's an overload condition, we first need to decrease the load putting on it, but then as we're recovering, we need to gradually increase it versus just returning back to running or anything like that. And the other part of the education component is avoiding compression. And so avoiding crossing your leg over the other where you compress that glute tendon against the leg. And that might have explained part of the recovery process for the education plus exercise group. And this is similar to a lot of the other research that's coming out with tendons and pain in general is that strength doesn't seem to be a big component to pain syndromes. And so it's not that it's unstable or weak necessarily because strength is going to be relative. While strength can be helpful in preventing injury, it doesn't really contribute too much to pain. The exercise program in the study focused on strengthening the glute muscles. They started off with isometric contractions, so they would contract the muscle without moving the joint, and then gradually load the glute muscles. It looks like they followed a program very similar to the heavy and slow resistance protocol, which is commonly used in the treatment of Achilles tendinopathy. And in that program, it's a three second concentric contraction followed by a three second eccentric contraction. In the study, it doesn't look like they loaded the glute tendon that much though. What they would do is they'd progress the exercises to be more and more challenging, but it doesn't look like they actually 
added any load to the exercises. And when we look at the research for other tendinopathies, it seems that increasing the load in a slow contraction during the rehab process seems to decrease the pain and also build the tissue capacity a little bit better than no load. And I think it'd be interesting if that in this study for the rehab program, if they added some weight to either like the squat or the offset squat or even the single leg squat that they did to see if that results in even better outcome for a conservative approach with the education plus exercise group. Of course, there's always going to be critiques about what's the best way to load the glutes or stimulate some sort of change for a tendinopathy. But overall, I think this research article provides tremendous value in that it basically says that a education plus exercise approach is more effective in the short term and also in the long term than a corticosteroid or a wait and see approach. In summary, gluteal tendinopathy is a common cause of pain on the outside of the hip. And this research article suggests that education plus exercise is a superior treatment option than a corticosteroid injection or a wait and see approach, both in the short term and then also in the long term as well. Thank you guys for watching this episode on gluteal tendinopathy. I've linked the article and also exercise videos underneath this video if you wanna look at those. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.